And we can four bet pocket jacks. That's sometimes a four bet, sometimes a call. I roll the four bet. And after four betting, we cannot fold and we have to hope for ace king if he jams. But if he calls, we're in okay shape. And we have several options here. We can go for a small C bet and we can go for a large C bet. Um, check is not really an option. So I go for a small C bet. Queen is a very, very bad card for me. He has ace queen of spades and ace queen of diamonds. Both of them, king queen of diamonds. I will bet another small bet here and fold the river. Check fold river. Um. Yeah, like blocking, especially the Jack of Diamonds is a really bad card. Now, now four or five got there, which he can have every uh, Jubiläre. Snap, yeah. Tell me his snap bluff here. Like the only bluffs he gets there with are Ace X of Diamonds now. Jack 10 of Spades, well, not there, so cannot find a single one. It's all yours. Should have just jammed the flop, which is kind of an option too, but not the best one. So I check back the flop, which I do sometimes there. That's obviously pretty nice if people start betting large there. And he had ace 10 and goes for the check call on the river. Okay. 43 sounds really tight. Yeah, it's super tight. If, but if you play race only, um, you gotta you gotta be tight. Good luck us. Yeah, like GTO wise, it sounds realistic, but exploitative, you can go way bigger. Well, exploitative, that's what I said. If you have really, really bad opponents, sure, go bigger. Um, like there are probably people where I play 100% against and there are people where I play like 70% against. So my, my overall stat will always be like close to 50 probably. But if there's Linus to my le left, I'm I like staying on the tighter side. So down here, that's an interesting spot. Um, I lose to all the other two pairs. He check raised on the flop and bets now large. Um, I win against all his draws and they might have a lot of equity. So jamming is an option too. Or I just want to call down. That's the question. Um, I think I call and uh, I call and I can fold on some uh, some some like hands that improve him. Wow, some cards I'm in. That's a tough one. No, I'm not. He cannot like bet two pairs for value anymore. He will jam something like nine, ten, jack, ten, seven, nine with a diamond. Jamming sets now. Um, so it's really just about flush draws that he check raised and hence that brick, but no barrel because the flush get there and I'm. Pretty, I feel like pretty confident in calling. Um, yeah, not flush draw, can play that way. Monster draw, but that's not too much. Like offset combinations that you change are more. Good luck, guys, going for the call. Ooh, call them. Uh, that feels, that always feels good. That's like, really when you think about it, those spots, how many flushes does he really have? And for how many bluffs that he had for sure, is this a card that he will always continue bluffing? Um, yeah, and then you think like, okay, he can have like that offset combo. 
uh, Jack 10, Jack 9, all of them are optional kind of. And most of them that he check raises are with a diamond. And if there is the king of diamonds on the well, uh, Jack, Jack 10 makes a straight. I didn't see that uh, in the moment, so maybe I was just lucky, but definitely not like overfold here insanely because the flush gets there. The flush getting there actually decreases the amount of um, value combos as well that he has. Unfortunately, it's like decreasing it in a way that my blockers do not ma matter. The ace jack with a jack of diamond would have been the way better catcher here, for example. But yeah. So again, that guy, we face that lead here. That sucks. Okay. Doesn't really make it better, but okay. Let's go first for a large bet here. I bet large on the flop already. Um, here I have no option but calling. That sucks because so far he always had it when he was betting. So I plan on I planned on hitting. That was the only plan I had. Unlucky. Hmm. That's a bad river, but I mean, I have 10x a lot and I can jam any 10 here. That's the good thing. That board he should check raise like his strong hands and now just bluff catch some. I block the clubs so it's okay to go, but he has, still has like all spades, plus I'm unblocking the nut club, so I'm over bluffing here, um, but rip it in. This is an, I guess you, this is a, like very low frequency bluff if a zero percenter, but um, he usually knows how to fold in, in some spots. And it's not like on that board I'm betting too much stuff that does not have either clubs or spades. So I take the best candidates to keep going here. Obviously the best river bluff would be something like queen jack of hearts. Just to increase the amount of snap falls he has. Okay, down here that's an interesting spot. Hmm. Uh, up there I 3-bet and I kept I c-bet large on the flop. I think I'll going for it to jam some rivers. And let's hope to what's what happened here? There check check on the flop, over bad turn with that flush draw. Uh, and here I I have it and I got a four bet against a let's say whale and here okay that tells me that my bluff works a lot if he jams it, all his nuts on the turn and uh, obviously have an easy fold up here that's a very very bad flop he called my four bet so I guess he has lots of kings queens not kings but like queens jacks tens maybe let's put him on ace king of hearts uh, but I'll check that flop here Okay, take the bet. Now dodge the spades. That's okay. This time at least we won't lose to ace deuce. King 10 off. Hmm. Um, and up here I roll to call with the aces again. Let's play. I'm strong with those aces in four bet pots it feels like. All with like with aces and four bed pots, I, I feel so strong, guys. I, would, I, I know what I'm doing here. Fredo Pizza. So check is fine. Very small bet is fine. Let's see. Give his give his uh, king jack a chance to hit. Okay. Okay. Now we need. I mean, we need him to not have queens. Pretty much any other outcome seems fine. I 
I folded seven. I had too much autopilot. I even I haven't seen. Oh, kings. <laughs> Whoops. Told you I know how to play those. Down here, I three bet big blind versus small blind, ace five off. I rolled a high number, so that's fine. I hope to win by checking back here. Yeah. Top subscribe the tier one. Uh, subscribe for two months. Welcome again, Todd. And yeah, guys, it's the real Todd. And maybe I cannot tell you too much, but we are working on something. It's the real Todd from Warcraft uh, 3, three, one of my childhood heroes. And we are working on some kind of coaching project. So um, maybe some stream involved, maybe some YouTube videos, but we will try to make uh, Todd better at poker as well. And um, yeah, we are working on it. Can't tell you more though. And uh, you know, if you haven't done it yet, Todd, just feel free to um, write me in WhatsApp, just like a little about your background, where you feel you stand at, uh, where you stand at at poker, and um, what you want to learn. Like just like some one page, whole page. More info is better. Uh, I like I like to read that stuff a lot um, to just get the most out of it. Uh, and you know, four bet pots, guys. We're four bet pot specialists. When I don't have aces, I try to hit a top set on a board where I can have plenty of bluffs. So I'll start off with a bet we a little deeper so I don't go quarter pot, I go 30%. Make sure to get in stacks easily. And well, I'll call that one off again. That's a, like, that play does not exist. King 10. Easy. This is a pure call, so we got some net net winnings right there. That's cool. Um, yeah, and we're soon to be closing out the second hour. That one went better, I guess. Um, okay, now this is tough. This is a large four bet. Um, and I have learned that it is GTO to just rip your king queen suited here because ace queen off is a four bet fold. And. Um, you're doing okay against jacks and tens, pretty much. But this is so big, and he has over 5k ants, different numbers. Like one number says he has 29% fold to 5 bet, another one says 54, and I don't know what's right. Uh, so stats are f fucked up. Um, actually, I think I'm not even calling because it's so big. Fuck it, I go with GTO, we rip it in his face, hope for the best, run it once. He's king off. Yeah, sure, he makes it big because of ace king off. King no good. Yeah, I, I know uh, it's 100% it's jam if he makes it smaller, like if he uses my size and it's making money for sure, but he's a good rack, so it can never be terrible. Um, next for a cold four bad pot here. A little deeper now. Tanking down is good. So bad hour to start, good hour to keep going. And we lost too much with a non like a no non showdown. So that looks bad. So I killed it. And yeah, let's see. Um Just as I always go uh, do, just reviewing hands, um, like making notes, obviously, sometimes looking stuff up with PyoSolver, that's that's how I work. Plus for the good feel to think about um, how the other guy would have played the hand or like how would I have played villain's hand to figure out, oh, actually that makes sense what he did and I can maybe implement that in my game or I have that feeling of, okay, he might have won the hand, but um, I actually made EV in that hand because this is a spot where I play the same hand better. So let's just look at the biggest hands again before going on short break. So let's just do that. I'll take you on the journey uh, and look at Wilde Schwester here. Uh, I would have folded that hand, which is zero EV. He three bets, four bets. If 
I happened to take over in that spot, I would have folded my king 10. In that spot, I would have checked back my king 10. And in that spot, I would have checked back my king 10. So uh, it's kind of, this is what I call uh, this, these were net winnings. Obviously he can hit king 10, five too, but in that spot, uh, the other way around, uh, that was clearly net winnings. And um, so we made lots of money here. This spot, let's have a look. I don't wanna pull out Pio Solver here now, close stars and really show you. So you've got to believe me. We play a simple four bet pot. King 10 suited is a fine three bet and it's an okay call versus four bet. It's sometimes a fold, it's sometimes a call. Uh, you should have it in your range. That flop is fine. Um, it's almost a range bet with a small sizing for out of position, makes it pretty easy to play. And uh, that guy, well, you have something like four, five, five, six, six, seven suited sometimes, you have ace, queen suited, you have ace, jack suited, you have aces sometimes, you have queens a lot, you have jacks pretty much always. You have some ace king and while well, you are in position, every card that you see more helps you with your decision because well, you know where you are at and you can act last. So that's the clearest call of all times and he decides to jam. Well, I'm not folding top pair plus. He's lucky and I'm folding ace king, okay? So uh, this might actually be like a break even play. <laughs> I'm not sure, it's too much in the middle. It might still be a break even play. But um, calling is printing money. Uh, let's just see in that spot how the hand would have would have, uh, would have have uh, played out. So this card, now I improve to ace king. Tens improve that I still have in my range. I see bad tens on that board too, yes. Um, plus he has ace king too, so my queens just decrease a lot in value. My range gets stronger, his range gets stronger, but I would go and bet small on that uh, that uh, card again. And he should call again. And then I have real trouble on that river. And I, I don't know, maybe rip, maybe check call, maybe check fold. Would have been a tough spot uh, that I didn't have in that spot. So um, he kind of fucked up. That was the flush over flush before, the ace deuce versus aces. That's like, well, third nuts versus nuts, I managed to get the money in too. So I did not really lose money on those. Um, now this time the other way around, I did not win any money on that aces versus kings. And that spot, I'm really not sure. Like I know that I, for example, make it $110 here. Um, and if you then jam your king queen suited, it's slightly plus EV against my range. I'm not sure what those 15 extra bucks means. I mean, either it's just a better risk reward ratio for me and my jam might be printing, or um, it just means that he is stronger or always has ace king and my jam is horrible and I should just be falling. So we do not really know. Um, and uh, I will put that hand on for review to maybe check this guy's four bed range a little for further out. Uh, further out. Um, yeah, we had that hand here. Uh, we got some sick calls, etc., etc. In the um, in the chat, so we'll go over that again. Uh, I have a two pair. I decide to bet large on that board. This would be one of those boards uh, where it's fine to actually overbet right away. It's always important that villain does not have offsuit two pairs and he should not have eight, six, queen, eight or queen, six offsuit here. So he has seven, nine suited. He has nine, 10 off, jack, 10 off, jack, nine off is closer whether he should defend or not. Um, and yeah, his check raise is definitely fine. And I call. That bet is definitely fine. And I can jam and I can call. This is something that I will look up, like which hands does he want to check raise here? Does he want to check raise sets? So when you look at the value hands, you definitely want to raise some here. If you have the nuts now and like hands like this always have 18% equity, all the open enders plus flush draws plus everything, um, you want to deny that equity plus you want to get setups for yourself in. 
If Villain has sixes and you have queens, you want to get it in now before there's the nine of diamonds on the river and the money won't go in. So that's something. And this is like the weakest of the hands that are still somewhat value hands. Like Villain could be playing a seven of diamonds like that and he can value bet, bet that. So it's kind of still a value hand. And um, yeah, so I decided to call because I think it's not strong enough and I only get set up under a setup in. So I'm kind of happy, like kind of happy to see the nine of diamonds to dodge a setup. Like if he has queen eight suited, for example. Call and that river is just, okay, jack 10 gets there, 10, nine doesn't, nine, seven doesn't, but he will fire all those through. Um, I didn't even see the jack 10, which I mean, um, in, the, in the first place. So probably it's it's uh, not uh, not such a great call how it felt in the beginning, but uh, since I mean I was just lucky to hit a slush. So um, this will be if you put it in Pio like uh, one of those bluff catchers that you should sometimes call, but clearly not never, uh, not ever, not always. And Ace Jack with a Jack of Diamonds is the clearly better bluff catcher. So I'm. Maybe I lost a little money here, or it was even, but like it's not like a fist pump, I win and I crushed him. Um, that one, easy, easy, old. This one is interesting. Uh, I'm not really sure about that board. I know that like ace five, four, ace four, three is a board that you need to check back a lot to protect like your kings, queens, jacks. Um, it's even more important when it's like button versus cutoff because you have like more king queen off type hands that are garbage in your range too. If you just go for a range c bet there, a uh, villain can check raise the shit out of you. So I sometimes check back my ace queen here um, and he starts betting large. I guess that bet size should not really exist too often, just a random guess, something I could look up to. Um, and he should go for a small bet just attacking my king queen type of hands and then now he has the problem I call and he does not really have like a 75% value bet pot value bet anymore and he you know I think he just figured out here and he didn't even think like oh I think he has more flush draws that now bluff so I use it as a catcher no I think he just was betting and now figured out well it's not like not strong enough to be betting large so I would like to see a block bet here instead to punish all my kings, queens, jacks that I might play that way. Uh, well, now I have an easy check back and a free roll with my ace x and well, tough to find the bluffs, but okay. So interesting spot too. And this one is another four bet to uh, pot to like a good one. Four bet pots, you can look them up so easily. It takes like a second to run in Pio. Um, it's a board that you should sometimes bet large, but you want to have a small betting range as well to attack all his king, queen of hearts, ace, queen of something. Um, yeah, diamond does not hurt me too much. It's just just the overcards. And since I have ace, king and ace, queen too, the overcards do not really hurt my range, just my hand. So um, yeah, I'm fine with that small bet. That queen sucks. And he won't turn his tens into a bluff here. So I'm happy with the how that one went down.